Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the all new MetaQuest 3 VR headset. Now I've been really excited about this and I've had a few viewers asking, so I figured I'd go ahead and make a video. We did the same thing with the Quest 2 and saw some pretty decent performance, but with the Quest 3 we do have that upgraded Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 with a lot more GPU power. So I think there's a chance we're going to see some better emulation performance coming out of the Quest 3, given that we do have up to 50% more GPU power with this one as opposed to the Quest 2. We're going to be taking a look at some Dreamcast, PSP, GameCube, Wii, and PS2 emulation in this video. I also have some other emulators installed that I wasn't able to get up and running, but with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so here we are inside of the MetaQuest 3, and I'm actually set up on a tripod right now. That way I'm not moving around so much, and uh, we can kind of get a stationary look at some emulators running. And I'm actually casting to my PC and then recording the screen. It's not ideal, and we're not going to get the best quality out of it. But if we were to use the built-in recorder here, then we would be taken away from the CPU and GPU when we're trying to emulate our favorite games. It's a bit weird on how to record this, but uh, either way, I think this will definitely get us by. Obviously, we can go ahead and download our favorite VR games right here. You can play your games that you want on the Quest, but in this video, we're taking a look at emulation. And when it comes to the operating system here, this is actually powered by Android, so we can easily sideload apps. From unknown sources, I've got a bunch installed. Now I'm going to go over what is working here and what's not. Ether SX2 PS2 works great. We'll take a look at that. Dolphin Emulator for GameCube and Wii, really good performance. PSP, amazing. RetroArch does work, but uh, I've got a little issue. I'll show you that in a second. We'll also be testing out ReDream for some Dreamcast. And Yuzu right here does launch, but unfortunately, I've been running into a lot of issues. We can go ahead and, you know, resize the screen how we want with any of these applications. So I've tried a bunch of stuff with Yuzu. I really wanted to get some Switch games working, but we're going to have to kind of wait on this. Right now, I'm not seeing any screen. Basically, if I start up, let's say, Cuphead here, give it a little while to start on screen controls. And I do have an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth so we can actually play our games with an external controller. Takes a second to load. FPS will be up in the top left-hand corner. You see, I'm getting audio, but no video. So that's the issue I'm running in with uh, Yuzu right now. I was able to get the intro video of a couple of these games working, but getting into gameplay, for me at least, is near impossible. It's just not working right now. Moving over to RetroArch. It works. We're getting great performance here. I've tested out some Saturn and some N64. So uh, we can actually go down the list here. We can download our favorite cores, but resizing this doesn't work. So as soon as I try to take this up, it's going to go black screen and then crash on me. Now I could definitely test it out with that smaller screen, but yeah, I mean, we've got more than enough power for those older emulators. What I want to look at is some higher end stuff. So we're going to start out here with some PSP using PPSSPP, and this is one of those that works absolutely amazingly on the Quest 3. And again, you can resize this screen, bring it up however you want, and recording in 16x9 will cut off a lot of the screen, so that's why I didn't do it for this video. I wanted you to see kind of everything on screen here. With this, we're at 4x resolution using the Vulkan backend, and I am using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. And going into this, I did have issues getting the controller working inside of each app. Once you get the controller up, you'll get a little dot on screen. Just press start and select on the controller. That little dot will disappear. And now the controller is going to work with whatever app you have up on screen. And I didn't have to do any mapping with PPSSPP. Here we are, 4X resolution, Tekken 6, running at full speed. And it's really hard to kind of transfer over to a video like this, but it's really awesome to be able to play these games in VR. You can set this screen up to look absolutely massive in VR, and with the Quest 3, we've got higher resolution, so everything is just a lot cleaner. I mean, it's really awesome to play these games like this. And basically, what we're doing here is just creating a big screen in VR to play these emulators. And keep in mind, everything you're seeing running in this video is running on the Quest 3 CPU, which is that new Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2. 
And of course, we had to test a harder to emulate PSP game. We've got Chains of Olympus, still at 4X resolution, using that Vulcan back in. Basically, if the game's compatible with the PPSSPP emulator, the Quest 3 is definitely going to run it at full speed. Next up, we've got some Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator, and going into this, I knew we'd have a great time with it. I'm not upscaled at all, but I'm sure we can go up pretty high with it. Unfortunately, you know, it uses a licensing system, and we don't have Google Play installed on the Quest 3, so, you know, automatically getting that license is a bit of a hassle. But I also tested Sonic Adventure 2. Both of these games ran at full speed. We're at 60 FPS, and initially, I was going to try Flycast and RetroArch for Dreamcast, Naomi, and Atomus Wave, but as we saw, we really can't bring that screen up any larger, so I kind of just skipped it for this one. But ReDream does handle these Dreamcast games quite well, so let's take it up a bit more. We're going to be testing out some GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. First up, we've got Automotalista, and I am at the native resolution. OpenGL back in. With the Dolphin emulator on the Quest 3, at least at the time of making this video, Vulcan isn't giving us great performance. I mean, across the board, I tried not to use Vulcan except for PSP, because OpenGL with these Snapdragon chips just functions really well. And this is definitely a harder one to emulate on these mobile chips. Every once in a while, you'll see it kind of dip down and then come right back up. But I think we're seeing some pretty decent performance here with the Dolphin emulator when it comes to GameCube and even Wii. Here's Tatsunoko versus Capcom, and one thing we gotta keep in mind with this VR headset is the CPU and GPU is always gonna be working in the background to render that VR background we have here. So we're not gonna be able to send 100% of the CPU and GPU to these applications. Now I guess we could set this up in pass-through mode. I'm not exactly sure how much CPU and GPU power it needs to do pass-through, but I like having this VR space. It just kind of gives you a place to kind of play your favorite emulators. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at in this video was some PS2 emulation using EtherSX2. We're using the OpenGL back end right now. I don't have any kind of frame skip or cycle skips going on with this game. Ratchet and Clank, 1.5x resolution, OpenGL back end. And with PS2, I noticed, you know, swapping between Vulkan and OpenGL doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with other emulators that gave me bad performance with Vulkan because EtherSX2 actually is kind of on par with each other and it really depends on the game. Some games may perform better with Vulkan, some games may perform better with OpenGL. But the next one we have here is Gran Turismo 4, still at 1.5x resolution. Looks pretty good here and it's actually really fun to play these racing games in VR. But the two games that we've taken a look at so far for uh, PS2 aren't the hardest to run. So what we're going to do now is test out God of War 2. And unfortunately with this, I did need to introduce a little bit of cycle skipping, unless I really wanted to take that resolution way down. And then in my opinion, it's just not worth it. We're at 1x with some cycle skips, so we're not at a constant 60 here. But with those cycle skips enabled, it does make it a much smoother experience. It's just really unfortunate that this emulator is not going to see any more updates for Android. Because when it comes to PS2 on Android, this was the go-to. And I think this is the only performance we're going to get out of this. Because we're just not going to see any more updates for EtherSX2. So overall, when it comes to emulation on the Quest 3, I think we're seeing some pretty decent performance. All of this was running natively on the Quest 3's hardware, that Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2. But you could always set up a Quest Link, either over USB or over Wi-Fi, and run your emulators on your PC, and then play them directly on your headset. But the biggest reason I like these Quest devices is that whole standalone aspect. I mean, we can run VR games directly on this unit here. We don't need a big, massive, powerful PC. But if you ever needed to, it's totally possible with Quest Link. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Quest 3, just let me know in the comments below. If we get any kind of updates for the Yuzu emulator, I will do another video. I'd love to run some Switch games in VR on the Quest 3. But until then, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Quest 3 or maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.